the brand new RTX 3060 1440p max settings, and as you can see, we are getting a really sky high frame rate actually. Ah! PC gaming is weird. It is here everybody, the RTX 3060 has arrived. And yes, you might be thinking you've heard all this before, but no, you'd be wrong. The RTX 3060 Ti has already launched, but this one is hot off the press, brand stinking new. It's probably not what Nvidia will be putting on the box, but I like that, let's go with that. Today's video should be really exciting and very fun for you guys, because we've actually got a full gaming PC build here today. As always, we're gonna go through absolutely everything that you need to know about all of the components in this build, whether they're any good, whether you should buy them or absolutely avoid them. We're gonna show you the full build process so you know exactly what to expect if you do wanna tackle something like this yourself. And of course, we're going to show you those all-important gameplay benchmark numbers. So if you do decide to put something that is quite similar to this together yourself, you know exactly how it performs and whether it's actually going to be up to snuff for the games that you want to play. But first, a quick word from this video's sponsor. Corsair's Hydro X is your gaming PC's new best friend. This exceptional custom cooling system not only lets you get unbelievable temperatures, but it's near silent with extreme performance. It is so easy to get started. Simply fire up the Hydro X configurator, pick a style and theme, and then let Corsair handle the rest. You'll get a full list of everything that you need with an easy buy link from Corsair.com. Get started with custom cooling the easy way today with that link down below. Let's start our build then, shall we? Bye bye 3060, we get you later. I love a priced performance PC, I do. It's my favorite. Or as you Americans would say, bang for the buck. Great British pound, because we're up ourselves. Anyway, the first thing you are actually going to need to grab is your motherboard. And I'm really excited for this because this is a B560 motherboard, which is quite similar to B550 on Ryzen, but this doesn't actually support CPU overclocking. But for the first generation of Intel B series motherboards, it does actually support overclocking on the RAM, which in English means that this is going to be perfect for any high end build that you don't want to overclock the CPU. It's nice that you do actually have some design here. You've got this cool sort of digital camo look. In terms of features, you do have a lot on this motherboard, especially when you're bearing in mind the price. Now, the main caveat is that you do have Gen 4 PCIe on both the top SSD and the top GPU slots, but the problem is you do need to use an 11th gen Intel CPU for this to work, which isn't gonna be a problem if you're watching this in a few months time, but obviously, at the time of filming, they aren't actually here yet. So you're going to lose out on some functionality there, or if you just want to save some money on a cheaper chip. Be aware that you don't get Wi-Fi on this motherboard. You have to get an external adapter, but to be honest, I'd recommend going for a more expensive motherboard if you need it, which does quite neatly bring us on to the CPU itself. And you pretty much got four main options, really, I'd say. Depending on when you're buying, you can either get the 10th gen or the 11th gen. 10th gen is going to be cheaper, but won't support the full features of this motherboard. But make sure that you're not overpaying for a CPU that has like overclocking support because you won't be able to unlock it with this motherboard. Having said that, at the time of filming, the best bet was actually the 10600K, which is overclockable, just because the price of this was actually pretty much the same. But if you're watching this in the future, I would reckon that the 11400 is probably gonna be your best bet. But in terms of holding back your gaming PC, to be honest, I think all of them are gonna do an absolutely fine job. Just the 10th gen won't support PCIe generation four. It's been ages since I've done an Intel gaming PC. This feels weird, I'm so used to Ryzen. You can't argue with the value though, can you? Keep this for Ron, later on. I know I've made that joke before, but it's great, isn't it? Write that one down, you can use it with your friends. RAM is a little bit of a weird one for this build because I feel if you went for all white sticks, it might look a little bit out of place. So I've gone for the hybrid approach. Here we have some stuff from XPG. This is the D60. And as you can see, it is very white, but you've got a little bit of silver trim on it as well. But much more importantly than how it looks, this is actually 3600 megahertz RAM, which is fully supported by the memory overclocking capabilities of B560. Who freaking Ray? I bet I look so macho then. With all my muscles. Eat a burger. <laughs> I am far too healthy for burgers. I'm more of a fish and chips sort of guy in a Mediterranean tomato sauce. And there you can see our perfectly matched RAM starts to go with our overall theme. We are using 16 gigabytes by the way, because this is definitely the best priced performance amount 
for a gaming PC, and you can always upgrade it to 32 a little bit later. It's the same ideology with our storage. This is PCI Generation 3, it's a seven drive. It's fantastic price to performance, but obviously 512 gig is pretty much the minimum for a gaming PC. If you're trying to save some money, then it's a good way to cut down. But if you install Warzone, that's about 200 gig if you want like the full Call of Duty game. So if you can afford a terabyte, it probably is worth it. Or maybe you're a massive spender and you're gonna go for the eight terabyte version is probably more expensive than the whole PC. Not if scalpers have anything to do with it. Now, the thing that does perplex me a little bit is that I've heard rumors that certain B560 motherboards won't actually support a PCI generation SSD at all in this top slot if you're using a 10th gen Intel CPU. And I'm not sure if it's gonna to apply to this motherboard, so we're going to test it. Worst case, this won't actually pop up at all and we have to lower it down to one of the other two slots. But best case, all three will work. Let's find out, it's gonna be a mystery. Who killed the PCIe slot? We'll get Daniel Craig to investigate. Next up, we have our CPU cooler, and this is the Shadow Rock 3 from Be Quiet. This is white and black, so it should fit our theme pretty perfectly, but as is pretty much always the case with Be Quiet products, as the name would suggest, they are very quiet. It's perfect for this build, but I just don't understand why Be Quiet don't actually make this fan in white and put it in the box. It seems a little bit counterproductive, to be honest, but maybe they had this exact build in mind. Things are getting serious. We're getting the instruction manual out. It's not as simple for Intel as it is for AMD. Oh, things have changed. Back plate goes on, screws go in. Don't have enough hands for this. It's just gonna fall over. Please don't do this in the case. Please don't do this in the case. Imagine if I was live streaming this, you'd think I was crazy. Well, you'd think I was more crazy. Ah, this was so much easier on AMD. Once you've done that, you've got these little Intel brackets that you just place on top of those posts. Screw those down, add a line of thermal compound, drop your cooler into place, safe and securely down. And then we have our Arctic digital camo motherboard combination. It's looking all right. Just drop your fan in place, grab your cable, and then plug it into where it says CPU fan. Now for many people, this will be the most interesting bit as we lean towards our case. And I admit, I have no idea whether this is gonna be awesome or pretty bad because I saw this on Overclockers UK and they did actually send this one out for this video because the front of this thing is so striking. This is very clearly a centerpiece PC. This case is all about the way it looks. But when I actually saw this for the first time, I had no idea just how bad the airflow on the front would be. I mean, just look at the front of this thing. It's pretty much entirely blocked by that infinite mirror. And I do understand that it does require quite a lot of physical room. That's just the way it's gonna work. But in the pictures, it looks as if you've got plenty of airflow, relatively speaking, of course, but you just don't. The only thing you could do is fit a fan here, and this is gonna help the graphics card, which is why we are going to do that. This better look good, Colink, otherwise I'm gonna kick off. Literally, I'm gonna use my feet, bang. Mini rant, hopefully over. Let's get this motherboard installed. They do at least give you the standoffs for ATX, pre-applied, which is always nice. No, they haven't. They've done some of them. Oh, it's just the little things. Oh, the little things like putting all of your screws in one tiny bag that when you open it, they spill out everywhere. I appreciate you sending me this case, but 70 odd quid for stuff like this is pushing it. So here is our first look at our case and chassis half assembled. I think it's looking pretty good. It definitely would not work if you use the all white components, but because we have that nice blend of black and white. I think it's coming along quite nicely. Rather ironically, the white at the front of the case does actually now start to become part of the theme. That's quite comical. Let's install our extra fan, shall we? To be fair, you could quite easily put this at the top and then have that blowing down and then create a loop of air like that. Will the front pull off easily? Yes, it actually will. And you can really see the extent of the problem, just how much mass you have in front of it. The only bit of airflow that you do have is here, and even then that's from these side vents rather than the front itself. So I think it will be fine for a build like this, but this is really not gonna be very suitable for like an RTX 3070 or above really. We will be looking at the thermals very closely. Whether it's gonna work thermally, I honestly don't know. My money is on, it's gonna run warm, but it's gonna be fine. 
because that fan is still pretty restricted. But I think the idea of running this without a fan at the front at all is not one I would want to try. If you're following along at home, I've just plugged in the USB 2.0 and the USB 3 up here. If you did have type C, it would be this port right here. We've got our power switch, we've got HD LED reset. And let's not forget our addressable RGB right here at the top. You've also got your fan headers. This is a four pin PWM for the Be Quiet fan. We'll plug this in right here down the bottom. Pressing swiftly on, we have our power supply. And this is one of the best value ones you can get from a respectable brand. It is not modular, so all of the cables are actually fully attached to this. But obviously, if you're trying to save yourself some money, this is quite an easy way to do it. There's not a huge bunch of cables here, and because we're not using hard drive, in the hard drive cage, you should be able to hide them quite easily. But realistically, this will probably save you about 40, 50 pounds on a proper modular one. 600 watts should be more than we need, to be honest, for a build like this. So I think all in all, this is probably a great choice. Drop that power supply in place. Drop your screwdriver on the floor. Tell your power supply, screw you, man. Will PC Centric ever run out of screwing jokes? I don't know, let me know down in that comment section below. The caliber of those jokes though, variable. It does look quite intimidating, the full bulk of cables that you get here, but I think it's pretty much just the Molex that we're not going to use. And the thing is, with a 600 watt power supply, you're not gonna get as many connections anyway as say like an 800 or 1000. Here's your ATX, we can feed that through to the motherboard chamber. CPU comes through at the top, and then you have SATA power for our RGB on the front and any hard drives or SATA based SSDs that you might be using. Let's plug in our absolutely huge 24 pin ATX at the top here. You can't miss it, but you can plug it in the wrong way round because you're silly. Oh, the CPU, you're probably gonna have to lay it all down flat to access, to be honest. This is one of the downsides to using a CPU cooler. I'm skinny, but I'm not that skinny. With those cables fitted, it's now time for the star of the show, the RTX 3060. And this one is from Zotac, it is the Amp White Edition. That is a really good looking graphics card. It seems to me that a lot of manufacturers have sort of cottoned onto this, but I've said it for years. If you're a manufacturer like Zotac that doesn't necessarily have like the Strix appeal, from your graphics cards, why not do something different and have a design that people are actively going to want to buy? And I think they've done it this time. It is quite a lot taller than the standard card, if you like. You can tell because these power connections are quite a way down, but this is gonna give you better airflow. But I'd be really interested to see just how warm this gets and how different it is to the TI version. And if you've been following along with the whole graphics card news, then you'll know that this is a 12 gigabyte card. That's right, 12 gig of VRAM, which is four more than you get on the TI. To be honest, if you're a creator, I would go for the 3060 because I think that VRAM definitely could be quite useful for you, especially if you're using four, six, or even 8K files for the stuff you're using. Whereas if you are a gamer and you can afford it, then obviously the 3060 Ti is gonna be a better card. At the moment, it's only really watchdogs that I've come across that actually run into a VRAM issue on the 3060 Ti, but I'm sure there will be more games to come. So this is quite future-proof, but obviously in terms of performance, it isn't as powerful. That goes, that really goes. It matches the cooler and design. Look what I've created. It looks good. Already people in the comments, no, it looks bad. My Hoover looks better than that. It definitely is quite difficult to actually plug the power connections into this card. I forgot about that from my 3070 review. But regardless, I think this is the optimal way to go in terms of aesthetics. But I think all in all, we have a nice, clean, tidy build. It was actually pretty easy. In terms of airflow, I wouldn't say I'm really concerned, but this is not gonna be the, uh, the cool mesh finish that you get from a lot of modern day cases. It's gonna be just cool in terms of appearance. I'm actually using an Aorus Wi-Fi card in this because I don't actually have ethernet at this desk. I know, I know, I, I need to get that sorted out, don't I? But if you have the money from the off, then I would highly advise that you just get a better motherboard that has it built in as it's cleaner, it's easier, and in some cases, you'll get a load of other features on your motherboard as well, besides just the Wi-Fi. Let's grab our monitor though. 4K is probably a little bit optimistic, but if you're playing something like Forza, it will be able to do it. Whoa, we have RGB already. That motherboard is surprisingly bright. Make sure you plug your display port into the graphics card and not the one that you get on your motherboard. Common mistake. Grab a USB drive that has a copy of Windows on it. Just download it from the website and then put that in the back panel. Pray to the PC gaming gods that everything is going to work. Sounds promising. I've just seen the front panel. 
The reason that you're buying this case, no doubt, and that does look pretty damn cool. Infinite mirror, you've got like a triangle effect that just goes on and on and on. That is neat. Please, PC gaming gods, please. That is, uh, that's not quite so promising, that. I haven't had a PC not work in ages. Oh. Let's try turning the DisplayPort version to 1.4. Oh. How bizarre. PC gaming is weird, but this is exactly what I did want to show you though. The RAM running at 3600 megahertz on a B series Intel motherboard. It is a step in the right direction and PC gaming has just got cheaper. Assuming that the scalpers haven't got hold of the cards. Oh, I'm going to trip up. But remember what I said earlier, will this actually support the PCI generation three SSD in that top slot with the 10th gen Intel CPU? I honestly don't know. Hopefully it's going to show up. Can we install Windows? No! But ultimately that's what I'm here for, right? It's better for it to happen to me rather than you. So give me a sec to actually plot this in the lower slots, restart Windows, get it all installed, get some games going, and I'll join you in just a bit. Here we are then, we're all set up, we're playing some Call of Duty Warzone, the classic that you guys always ask for. This is running at 1440p max settings, and as you can see, we are getting a really sky-high frame rate, actually. This is beautiful. Nvidia say that they're targeting 1080p 60 in the latest and greatest titles, with ray tracing and the likes actually turned on. But realistically, I think that something like Warzone is what most people are going to be playing, and clearly it's a big result for the 3060. But what about 1080p, you ask? Great question. Oh, and I've just died talking to the camera. You guys! I was trying to play, okay? Touching down once again, and now we're getting anywhere between 100 and 120 frames a second, which is going to give you that super smooth, high refresh rate experience, which, if you are going to play Warzone, definitely could be the difference between life and death, assuming you're actually quite good at the game, of course. Next up, it's time for some Fortnite, but I have actually got a little bit distracted by the sheer beauty of this system. It's not necessarily turned out exactly how I'd like. I think the CPU cooler is a little bit too big and bulky for my personal preference, but actually the graphics card looks fantastic and you really can't get away from that front panel on this. Love it or hate it, regardless of whether the rest of the case isn't exactly the best thing in the world, you are clearly getting what you pay for when it comes to the front. It looks fantastic and it is gonna make your PC a little bit of a centerpiece. Without further ado, let's drop straight into Fortnite then and we are getting a little bit of stutter as we always do with every single new, brand new PC build, first game of Fortnite. It is a weird phenomenon, so if it does happen to you, don't worry, it's just by design? I assume it's just preloading textures or something weird like that. But this is 1440p, again, epic preset this time, some max settings. And again, we're getting around about 100 frames a second. It is pretty consistent, actually, across the multiplayer titles. So it's a really flexible little graphics card, this. Most PC gamers are playing at 1080p, with around about 140, 150 frames a second now. So consider me super impressed, really. If you want a graphics card that can handle a little bit of everything, then the 3060 is a great option. Yes, two kills! Bearing in mind I never play it, I'm actually alright. Now this is a great opportunity to actually talk about the thermals and acoustics, because let's be honest, as expected, they're not great. It's not the quietest graphics card out there, and even though it's a pretty quiet CPU cooler, the fans have come on a little bit. I think the main culprit really is actually this back fan. It seems to be ramping up for no real reason, even though I've tuned it. It's clearly not the quietest thing out there. But anyway, enough of that. The show must go on. Let's move on to our single player titles. This is Star Wars The Fallen Order, and this is running again at epic settings, 1440p, and we're getting well over 60 frames a second, with around about anywhere between 70 to 80 fps it is super smooth this is running on a g-sync monitor as well so it really does feel the business it just blows me away just how much detail there is in this game it is fantastic it is next gen gaming well that's what i would describe as next gen gaming super smooth great visuals but if you ask nvidia they'll tell you that it's all about dlss and ray tracing so shall we fire up some cyberpunk Let's begin our journey with the Ultra preset, so no ray tracing. You can definitely notice that DLSS is set to the balanced preset though. It's not quite as sharp as proper 1440p. It's not far off, but when you're moving you can see it's just not quite as good. So maybe consider changing it to the quality setting rather than the balance that we're using here. 
but 60 FPS in a game like this is really not too shabby at all. But let's get the party properly started with some ray tracing, shall we? We go with the medium preset, and our frame rate has tanked, but to what? Not too bad, actually, around about 45 frames a second. So we've lost, what's that, around about 20% of the FPS. So my advice, if you do want to get ray tracing, is to set it to ultra, but then down res to 1080p, but make sure that the DLSS is set to the quality setting. The end result is that you do properly get that full fat next generation ray tracing experience, but the frame rate is actually pretty similar to 1440p with the medium preset. I'm not sure how I would choose to play the game, I guess it depends what you're doing. If it was a firefight, I would definitely rather be playing at 60 frames a second rather than the 45 that we're getting now. This is clearly the most demanding bit really. Right in the city, we've got all of these high rise buildings, but realistically, if you're gonna grab a 3060 and you're gonna use these settings, you can expect anywhere between 40 and 60 FPS. So then, this is our RTX 3060 gaming PC. It's definitely a looker, there is no doubt about that. When it comes to the raw performance, there's not really that much to fault. The only thing that has toppled this a little bit has been Cyberpunk with full fat ray tracing on Ultra. However, there definitely are a lot of changes that I would make about this system if I was building it myself. Firstly, if you can stretch to the 11th gen CPUs, even if it's 11400 from Intel, I think you're gonna get the full feature set really and just have a more complete experience. For me though, I really do have a hard time I'm recommending this case. Like, it is fine, it's passable. The front really does look fantastic. If you clicked on this video, you saw the thumbnail, then clearly you liked the look of it, or at least it caught your attention. But there is nothing else really about this case to like. You've got one random fan at the back that doesn't really make that much sense. You've got no cable grommets, it's not the most premium case in the world. The screws on the side panel aren't captive. But obviously, the main thing is the fact that the airflow is pretty much non existent at the front, which is just so baffling. I mean, I understand how they did it, but why did they do it? All you needed to do really was make something that would come out a little bit more and actually make these vents usable rather than what we've got now that's just so limiting. But the question does go out to you guys. Do you think there is a complete deal breaker? Do you like what we've built here? What do you think of the RTX 3060? I would absolutely love to hear from you. So please do let me know down in that comment section below. If you've enjoyed this video, smash that like button. It helps out so much you honestly wouldn't believe. And for all of the parts that were actually in this build, then you can find those down in the description below for your perusal with current pricing. And of course, while you're down there, don't forget to check out Corsair Hydro X. Corsair has a wide range of blocks and fittings to match any modern gaming PC, with brand new GPU blocks that are perfect for RTX 3000 series. All thermal pads and pastes are pre-applied, so they slip onto your components like a glove. Create the loop of your dreams and give your PC that next level look with Hydro X today. Check it out with that link down below. Thank you so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. I will see you in the next one.